so that uh, we can be able, able to to get to know who's in and who's not. Sis Mandy? Hello, Chair. Any apologies? Hello, Chair. Yes, Honorable Chair. Yes, Chair. There's only one apology, Chair, from Honorable Makubela. She's on sick leave. Thanks, Honorable Okay. Chair. Thank you. Remember yes. that uh, we can be able, able to any move for the adoption or acceptance of the apology as presented by to our get to know who's in and who's not. Sis Mandy? I move chairperson for the Hello, acceptance Chair. of the apology. Any apology? Hello, Chair. Yes, Honorable Chair. Yes, Chair. Honorable Chair. Yes, Chair. Yes, Chair. There's only Please one apology, Chair, from Honorable Makubela. Okay. 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 I do stand on the Remember that uh, we can be in the so much. Any move for the adoption? That takes us to acceptance of the apology as presented by our get to know who's in and who's not. This Monday, I move chair for the acceptance of the apology. Hello, chair. Yes, honourable chair. Emails. Yes, chair. There's only one apology chair from honourable Mr. Kumela. Members, uh, we can be in the Any move for the opening of that takes us to acceptance of the apology and responses to questions from the members of the committee. I move chair for the apology. Hello, chair. This one. Yes, Chair. There's only one apology chair for the Honorable Kubela. Yes, We want just to confirm that we have sent a and the response is invited uh, to all the questions that are the the and the uh, responded. We want just to confirm that we have sent a uh, and also the response is invited uh, to all the questions that are the responded. We want just to confirm that we have sent because we. When we advertised uh, 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 this expression of interest, this this is what we this is what we have received because our model is is more district based model. So we received quite a number. Of, when we advertised uh, 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 this responding to to this, those are the those are the numbers uh, that we have. Uh, let me go to the next slide. Uh, also, in terms of this, this is what we have uh, 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 of our model is more distinguished more than the quite a number. When we advertise, we respond also to this. Those are the numbers that we have. 
Where does that uh, Let me put the next slide. This is what we have received. Also, in terms of the this is what now the slide of the present moment is more difficult of what the let, let, let me go to the next. Um, and that, colleagues, is just a summary of what I've gone through. Just to note um, is that we have requested from our human resource development section um, engaging with ETDP, CETA, um, and that to provide us just a summary of social what work I've gone through. Just to, to note um, for all is that we have schools. requested from our human resource development section to ensure that there's also um, support there, with ETDP, um, CETA, um, and that to provide us just a summary of social work I've gone through. Just and to note is that we have requested which human resource will be there to deal with this particular item will be an issue. Thank you, Chair. I have a honorable Kasim, but I want to request members that are going to speak that just be precise to the point. Don't have a long preamble before you ask your question, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, and I will be to the point. I've got a number of questions because there were a number of presentations that were presented, but I'll get right to it. Uh, just before I begin, very quickly, Chair, I think it's important to note that there was a request in the last meeting that the questions that were asked verbally, uh, that the department uh, goes through the recording of the meeting, and those that they did not respond to at the time, that they respond to it in writing. That, that wasn't done, uh, Chair. Um, there were a number of questions that I had asked in the last meeting verbally um, that have still not been uh, responded to. But I just thought uh, you should note that and the department needs to still uh, keep to that uh, commitment. My first question, Chair, is as it pertains to the 
uh, PPE uh, delivery. Um, uh, we were told that uh, in the previous meeting that uh, this uh, PPE is being locally procured. Um, can they, uh, unless I missed it in the presentation, Chair, can we get an exact uh, date as to when uh, the PPE for teachers will arrive? We know teachers are arriving on Monday at schools and when the PPE for learners uh, will arrive uh, in the different uh, districts because, you know, you, you are now not doing the central procurement um, and that would mean that, you know, it, it, it's not going to happen all at the same time. Um, then can we were given an age analysis of the, the teachers, those over the age of 60 and those under the age of 60, and then we were presented with a form for those over the age of 60 that would have comorbidities or any other underlying conditions that would make them an additional risk uh, uh, in terms of the fatality if they had to contract COVID-19. My question to the department chair is, why is that limited to those who are over the age of 60? Because what we have seen uh, uh, internationally is that the fatality rate for individuals with underlying conditions is not confined to a particular age cohort. Uh, so that form that says, if you are over the age of 60, you fill out the form if you have any other underlying condition or comorbidity. Why can't that be opened up to all uh, 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 staff and teaching staff that would have a comorbidity uh, or an underlying condition that would put them uh, at risk? My next question, Chair, is as it pertains to sanitation. Uh, 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 Tsepo's uh, presentation tells us that 16 projects have been completed for the 2019-2020 financial year uh, insofar as the SAFE initiative uh, is concerned. Now, I've been trying to get this figure for a long time, Tsepo. I've even tabled written questions on the matter and I'm not getting answers on it. So I thank you for that uh, inf a piece of information. What really concerns me is that, uh, you know, we went into lockdown on, was it the 16th or 17th of March? Uh, or 20th of March, somewhere around there, um, which was pretty much uh, towards the end of the last week and a half of the financial year. There were 262 projects that were presented to us, Chairperson. Uh, you remember at the end of last year, when we were doing the annual report, uh, there were 262 uh, projects uh, that uh, the SAFE initiative was supposed to have completed uh, before the end of the financial year. In fact, you remember there was a list that was given to us. Um, uh, I've still got that list of which schools uh, are there that were going to get uh, sanitation. And the completion date was sometime in December last year, uh, 262 projects. Now we are told only 16 projects uh, were completed. Now that to me is an absolute disgrace. I know it's not SEPO's department per se because it's the safe initiative and it's, also, it's, it, it, it's a national initiative that is concerned. What I want to know, Chair, mm -hmm. is exactly why of 262 projects that we were told were going to be completed in December last year, only 16 of them uh, have been completed. I want to get a, a very honest uh, answer from Mr. Pofole. But I also want to know, Chair, is what exactly the department doing about this going forward? Because obviously the current mode of delivery is not working. I know when I visited schools uh, at the beginning of this year, most of the schools that were on the list that were given to us, Chair, had not even started uh, any sort of uh, uh, contracting of service providers. Um, uh, and uh, we knew that the situation is going to unfold. So what is different on the 144 now that's been put out to tender? And the, those that was, that 144 plus the 16 doesn't even cover what was supposed to have been done in the 2019-2020 financial year in terms of sanitation projects. My next question, Chair. Uh, is as pertain to the water uh, tanks, the 2,427 water tanks that need water into the existing tanks and the 931 skill, schools that need their water tanks. Now, uh, can we just get certainty from the department chair? Are those 2,427 schools going to get their water and by when? Because maybe I missed that from the presentation. We were just given the analysis. Um, but uh, can they tell us exactly, are they going to get their water? By when are they going to get their water? Uh, and uh, those schools that require tanks, are they going to get their tanks? Uh, there was a budget that was put forward in that respect. But when are they going to, uh, will those tanks have been installed? Um, then in terms of the infrastructure budget, Chair, uh, we see that the COVID uh, hygiene packages to the tune of 210 million rand are coming from the infrastructure budget. And we know that the Eastern Cape has 
uh, infrastructure backlogs, uh, 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 which are severe and might never ever be dealt with. Um, can Mr. Pofola take us through exactly which uh, uh, projects, and maybe he can send us a list if he can't take us through on this, it probably will be difficult to take us through in this meeting, but which projects uh, in terms of the white book are not going to be able to be uh, done because of uh, money now to the tune of over 200 million being taken out and the accruals. Uh, I know that uh, uh, Honorable Pillay asked about the accruals. Uh, my understanding is that the accruals are paid, but they're still coming off the budget. They, you still have to present it as having come off the budget. So already in terms of the current financial years, uh, 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 infrastructure projects, uh, over 400, 428 million rand you have to already uh, subtract uh, in terms of any other projects that can be done because you have to pay accruals and now you have to buy these hygiene packages. Can we get an analysis chair, uh, perhaps uh, in writing from, from the infrastructure department, which projects do these uh, affect and are there any ongoing projects uh, that we are going to foresee uh, a, a halt uh, in terms of the completion of the projects where, the, where there's going to be a standstill um, if we can get that uh, information. Then, Chair, as it pertains to uh, squalid transport, um, we are told that 65,851 needy learners will not be transported, etc. Can we get an understanding, Chair, because there have been now two, over two months that we've been in lockdown, or just about two months that we've been in lockdown. Um, was there any money that was saved in terms of the budget for scholar transport, because there were no scholars that were being transported uh, in that period, uh, because I'm not hearing anything to that effect. Uh, my next question, Chair, sorry, Chair, just to go back to infrastructure, we were told in one of the previous presentations that we, we have an issue regarding social distancing in uh, schools where there is overcrowding. Um, now, that might not be a problem, and I asked this question last week, I haven't gotten a response yet, that while that, while that might not be a problem, uh, if when the grade 12 learners and grade 7 learners arrive on the 1st of June, it's going to be a problem when the other learners are phased in. I've not heard anything in, in, in the infrastructure presentation or the school readiness presentation as to what is going to be done about that. Because when, when the other grades are going to be phased in, um, you're going to have to still maintain social distancing, but with the overcrowding in classrooms, what is your plan? Is there a plan in terms of infrastructure to provide temporary classrooms, uh, uh, etc. or prefabs uh, to, to have we identify wh which schools this will affect. Can we get a list of those schools uh, and what the plan is uh, for those uh, schools? Uh, then my next question, Chair, is as it pertains to the school nutrition program. Now, I, I became very angry uh, when, I, when I listened to this presentation and I'll tell you why, Chair. We are now being told that uh, the minister has indicated that, uh, you know, all learners must get their nutrition not just grade 12 learners. And what made me very angry about this chair is that when I raised this issue uh, uh, in the very first meeting that we had, we were told by the department it's not possible because I said, you know, why can we not take the same money that's been allocated to school for school nutrition uh, that's not being used at the moment because there's no children at school, that we, 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 we instruct those that, at the schools to purchase food parcels and have them delivered uh, uh, with uh, the school nutrition, with the school called the transport system or any other system uh, to uh, those homes where those learners are so that they can get nutrition, which is their basic right in this respect. We were told that it's not possible. I wrote to the MEC chair uh, over a month ago. Uh, I've got the letter in front of me. I wrote to the MEC to urge the MEC uh, uh, to follow uh, this kind of approach. Uh, to date, I've not received a response uh, from the MEC, uh, which has become the norm. Uh, it's been now two months that learners have not been getting their nutrition, many of whom rely on it as their only meal for the day. I find this shameful, Chair. I find this absolutely shameful that only now, when the minister says something about it, all of a sudden we can think. When two months is passing, our children are suffering and we couldn't do anything about it. And we've raised this issue. I raised it in the first meeting. I wrote to the MEC. And what this is, Chair, it's arrogance and it's pride. If you are not so arrogant and you can listen, not with 10 ears, but actually listen to what you are saying, then we could have actually eased that burden earlier on. And I want to get an explanation, Chair, from the MEC, why I have not gotten a response to my letter, why this couldn't have been done from the very beginning or when we raised this issue, and why it can only be done now and not then. Because 
you don't need a full complement of teachers to execute uh, a such operation. You need a little bit of, of creativity and a little bit of commitment in this respect. And I want to get an answer as to why that couldn't have thank been done. Thank you. I can be done now. My last question, Chair. My last question is we were, we were uh, told by the minister in her, in her address to the nation that there's going to be a consortium of independent auditors that is going to uh, basically, from what I understood, uh, 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 replace a lot of the work that's done by the department in terms of monitoring uh, of, of, of what is happening at schools. Can we get an update from the department as to how that is going to be run? Is that going to be contracted by the national department or is it contracted by the provincial department? What are the costs uh, that are involved uh, and how exactly uh, you know, that's going to affect the work of the department going forward. Thank you very much. I'll reserve my questions you, regarding Kassim. for the next uh, uh, agenda item. Thank you. Just Honorable Kasim, as well as the department, note the question that talked to the number of projects that have been put in abeyance in relation to what appears on White Book. That question, my view, and the list to be given will be more relevant in its response when we deal with the 2020 to 21 budget. So, but the list must be ready. So for now, that question may not be reported. But when we deal with the budget and policy speech, that question, by the time we deal with that, we must be having the information around that. So it becomes more relevant when we deal with the 2020, 2021 budget in terms of infrastructure as concerned. Uh, Honorable Fildan. Uh, thanks very much, um, Honorable Chair. I've got a few questions, but I want to start off by making my principal statement, Honorable Chair. Yes, it's simple. The department is not ready to reopen schools on the 1st of June 2020. And they know it. They know that they are not ready, but they come here and they present us with plans that create the impression that they are ready or that they will be ready. Here are some of the reasons why I say they are not ready and they know it. The teacher unions themselves have stated very clearly that they are not convinced that the department, in other words, the teaching and learning environment will be ready on starting day, even starting next week with one day to prepare for that. When, I, when the presentation was going on, I kept on in touch with some stakeholders here, and they say that they are far from being ready as far as they, are, they know on the ground. Also, on the side of transport, which is a critical driver of our education systems, I got in touch with those people, and they tell me that uh, there are only three regions that have been contracted, and that is Joe Gabi, Chris Hani, and Alfred Zor. When other regions inquire about scholar transport, they are told that your, your, your contracts stopped on the 31st of March. So who is going to take these kids to school in the other regions? Also on sanitation, there's a, there's a contradiction here. We are told in one slide that 2,666 schools, uh, you know, have as yet no, are not yet properly equipped for sanitation. But in another slide, we are told that uh, there's access to clean water. Which is which here? Why are we being given contradictory statement by the same department? Also, on the side of health, like um, Honorable Duba said, right now, health facilities are being closed one by one, albeit temporarily. So we do not have faith and confidence in the assumed, you know, and not yet contracted arrangement that schools will be linked to health, to nearby healthcare facilities. We know that a number of healthcare facilities are over 10, 15 kilometers away from some of the schools that are going to be open. Now, my question is, who is going to transport kids who are found, in fact, when teachers could fall into, who are found not to be suitable to enter, you know, a school, uh, you know, on, on opening and going on? Just a few other questions, Jay. Uh, how many months will the mass take last? I understand they are reusable and they are going to be issued once off. Second question is, how and when are the above 60s to be oriented? 
for this new approach and has the department satisfied itself that they will actually be able to teach from home, including being effectively monitored once they teach from home. On queuing, how much earlier will the scholars and the teachers be expected at school to arrive, considering the labor laws of the country, in order for them to queue up every day for screening? And how will, uh, how frequently, how frequently will these thermometers be tested to ensure that they are continuously efficient, efficient to, to, to perform the function, to give the correct reading. And uh, the last one, uh, Honorable Chair, about the principles again, state of readiness. How and when have this train, uh, these principles been trained to deal with the, with, with the issues at hand? So with those are my questions, and it's because I don't think that any of these questions are going to be responded to sufficiently. Hence, I started off with the conclusion that the department will not be ready on Monday to take people there. I spoke to one person and they said, we haven't even had plans. We are non-teaching staff and we haven't been fed with any plans as to what is happening. All we hear is what is in the media. So what on earth is the department doing? Is somebody planning a genocide here? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Sultan. Honorable Kutsuye. Honorable Kutsuye. Kutsuye. Sorry, yes. I battle to, to, to link myself on to demute my, my, my screen. Honorable okay. Chair, I want to start by concluding myself and align myself with what Honorable Futani just have said. And I'm saying that in, in line with this fantastic presentation, especially the first part on the PPEs, and there is what, what, what I noticed that there's a lot of training and communication. There's 10 days left from now until the, the 1st of June. And, sir, there's no way on earth that the department will meet their deadlines as far as that to make the schools available and ready for, for learners to accommodate the learners. There's too much communications and documentations still to be communicated with the management of schools. And now I have to know what they're going to do about that. Further, sir, these programs, these uh, uh, presentations, we've got four different ones, and they all play a role in the preparations and getting the schools ready for the 1st of June. And I'm sorry to say, but my impression that I've got that these four programs doesn't interlink with one another. Taking school transport for an example, there's so many uh, educators, uh, learners that need to be transport, which also played a, a big role in the nutrition part. What is the department going to do? And this problem around transport, as Honorable Asim have said earlier, is coming over a period of time. And there's no different program of action to solve this problem. My other concern is the water supplies to the schools and sanitation. And this transport, uh, this water and, and sanitation plays a big role in the protection of our children in, as far as the COVID uh, virus uh, uh, pandemic is concerned. And there's big gaps between what is available, what is and what is not available. And I haven't heard any word from the department is how are they going to solve these problems regarding sanitation and water tanks and the supply of water and the con constantly maintenance of waters to the schools. And it's new, it's old news that most of these tankers were installed incorrectly. Some of them are damaged, so the schools haven't got water. So what are they going to do about that? 
Um, so I think I must full stand with that. That is my concerns, and I'd like to hear what the department have to say, what they're going to do, and what are their plan of actions to solve these problems. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Honorable Kutsi. Honorable Porter? Chairperson, yes, thank you very much for this opportunity. First and foremost, I need to first say thank you to the officials, specifically relating to questions that I have asked in terms of um, the screening teams, the link between the clinics and the schools, and then also the scholar transport. Much, much more detail did come out there. But overall, generally, there is an improvement, in my view, in terms of detail that's coming out from the department. But it is a push from the committee members. And yeah, I need to absolutely congratulate all my colleagues on this committee for their input, their questions, their concerns, because children are close to all of our hearts. And without this committee's collective wisdom and questioning and oversight, I'm sure the department officials does find it difficult at times to look at all the angles uh, where we come from. And so we assist them greatly in improving their plans, the details in their plans, and to fill in the gaps. But Chair, more importantly for me, and I agree and I support a lot of the sentiment regarding the statement that the schools are not ready to open. And we mustn't take this lightly. Because, as you know, people are very, very concerned about their welfare and health of their children. And yet I want to specifically come to SGBs. During these presentations, I have heard nothing about SGBs, who's going to be responsible to bring SGBs on board in terms of informing them, briefing them, or even orientating them in terms of this new protocols, processes and procedures and what's going to happen at schools. And I would like the department just to elaborate a bit more there and tell me what is their thinking regarding getting SGBs on board. And then also just generally looking at all these new elements that we've got to deal with, as specifically zooming in on training. And I'm speaking now at the frontline level where we're talking about these uh, screening teams, the queue walkers, who's going to be training these people, who's going to be doing quality assurance, new way of how we are doing things, or is it going to be just a rushed situation where, okay, you stand here, you're a queue walker, you must do this, do this. Is there any training assurance making sure that service providers know what we are looking for, food handlers. Do they know how to conduct themselves under these new protocols? Who's going to do that quality assurance for us? Who's going to sign off and say, these people have covered A, B, C, and D. Yeah, they've signed on the dotted line. We're happy with them. They know what their job description is. They know exactly what to do. I'm very concerned about that gap that we're not seeing filled in these plans relating to SGBs and quality assurance of this new training that's got to take place. And I would like a bit more information regarding that. And Chairperson, thank you very much for your patience this morning. Thank you, Honorable uh, Porter. Honorable Dabeni? Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, Honorable Members, and HOG and the team of the department. I'm not sure if I'm audible enough, Honorable Chair. I'm, yeah, I'm audible, in my, yeah, audible, audible. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in my villages. Uh, yeah, uh, you know them. <laughs> yes, Honorable Chair. <laughs> Um, look, Honorable Chair, um, let's appreciate the comprehensive presentation um, by the SG and the team that presented. 
at least it does to a large extent give us a picture of where we are as the province in preparation for the reopening of the schools. However, Chair, it is natural that uh, both as parents and as public representatives will be worried um, and be concerned about the state of affairs generally, especially in the Eastern Cape as the numbers are rising every day. Second to that, Honorable Chair, the world has celebrated us as South Africa who now have handled the issue of the COVID-19. So we do not want as and when we open our schools and open up ourselves for criticism, um, reversing the gains that we've already made uh, in terms of us being uh, benchmarked um, with other countries of the world on how we've handled the matter of COVID. So coming co closer to the issues that are raised, uh, Honorable Chair, is the issue of, uh, for me, um, the issue of the, 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 our communication, our message to, 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 to the public and to the schools. We should be saying, Honorable Chair, that uh, our first point of call is the safety of the learners and the teachers. So if we say so, we should be saying, Honorable Chair, that uh, we must do everything else possible to make sure that the first day we open the schools on the 1st of June, every safe, uh, um, or safety measure is adhered to. That talks to the issues of the PPEs, that talks to the issues of the uh, 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 sanitizers, the issues of the masks, the issues of the um, clean running water and all the necessities that are there for the school to open. So that um, all these issues that are a prerequisite are met before we open the doors of our schools. That's one point. The second issue, Honorable Chair, um, on the report, on the presentation of the infrastructure, the report indicates that uh, you have got about 2,666 schools that do not have budget. And um, you have got about 931 schools that need uh, water tanks to date. Um, and all that and all that. Now, you have got about 67 schools. Um, um, we have got about six schools that are, that are completely vandalized in terms of that report. We have got a number of schools that uh, need uh, minor renovations or minor repairs, so to speak. But that presentation does not tell us about how far have we gone in terms of fixing that. You have got about a number of schools that need um, minor repairs, like fixing of windows and all that. How far are we, are we, have we gone in terms of that? If you have got six schools that are completely vandalized, what is the plan uh, to deal with that aspect? If you have got about 931 schools that need water tanks on the first day of the opening of schools, reopening of the schools, um, so those schools will need to have uh, clean running water through the water tanks to have plans, uh, contingencies for that to happen. So these are the issues that um, are a great area in terms of the, of the, of the report in terms of how far we've gone on that. The second issue is the issue of the scholar transport. You see, Honorable Chair, this, 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 I know that we're on, in the COVID era now, we can't debate about those matters uh, because they will need us um, to have a physical kind of a meeting where we see each other. But in my view, Honorable Chair, if you have got a department of transport that says they were on the process of contracting uh, they completed certain regions, but Sarah Padman, Nelson Mandela, BCM, Mamatole uh, were not completed at the time. Um, but we can't ask the Department of Education uh, in this platform to account for that. But it tells us that uh, in terms of the scholar transport, there has to be an interaction, honorable chair, between yourself and the chair of the portfolio committee to understand as to how far has the Department of Transport gone in terms of making sure that uh, all systems goes for the for the for the for the for the for the transportation of our learners, so that as and when we open our school on the day first day we open our school, everything else to that effect is then attended to. My third point, Honourable Chair, are the two scenarios presented on the school. For me, Honourable Chair, I don't understand um, 
Fine. I, 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 I do appreciate the political willingness to say, even if a learner is not a school, that learner must get a, a school nutrition. But I, I want the practicality of it. If, for instance, on a road chair, we have got a learner who is transported by a transport to a school, and that learner is doing grade eight, I'm making an example of grade nine. So it's not on the category of the learners that are supposed to be going to school on the 1st of, of June. But you expect that learner to be transported just to get a plate, a meal uh, from school. For me, it's, a, it's an extra um, expenditure that, in my view, we do not need. So for me, um, scenario B becomes the better option. To package all those food parcels for such learners, see how they are distributed, where they are in terms of them, instead of overpopulating our schools with learners that do not need at this particular stage, or they are not required to be at school at this point, because the more we, we, we bring back learners, even if we bring them through a school, I mean, a school nutrition, by exposing them to a high risk in terms of the infection. So I think the scenario be presented um, present a better option in terms of that. Um, uh, so I would, I would, I would say, um, uh, Honorable Chair, the, the, my last issue is the issue of the of the of the of uh, the issue I raised in the in the in, in the previous meeting, the, the connectivity of especially the rural schools. I see the good presentation about the distribution of tablets, the SIM card, the uploading of the uh, academic information to those tablets and all that, which is good for me. But still, we are talking about the issue of the connectivity, especially for rural schools. So, I I raised um, in the previous, uh, I think it was a subcommittee, I mean a subcommittee of my political party, but I think I raised it even in the platform of the that the department needs to have a multi-dimensional approach in terms of dealing with this issue of connectivity to make sure that even the rural schools um, uh, does have access to this uh, connectivity. Because in my future, we are still going to sit with this COVID issue for a very long time. Uh, so therefore, the schools that are in the bundles, in the villages, in the rural areas, needs to be taken along in terms of them being connected to the, uh, to the network and internet so that those learners can have access. I just imagine a school in the bundles of Jokad with all that infrastructure provided, but there's no connectivity, there's no connection. So how are you going to access the internet? How are they going to be? So hence I'm saying, uh, Chair, the department needs to be looking into multidimensional approach in terms of accessibility and connectivity of the school. So I felt, Honorable Chair, I must make those few points, but we appreciate the presentation made by the SG and the team. At least it does give us a direction as to where we are as the province. At least from where we're sitting, we can be able to say we are ready for the reopening of the schools. But all these matters that are raised by members need to be tightened up, um, mindful of the time frame, of course, um, and, and, and we'll continue to do our oversight in terms of monitoring as to how far are we in terms of the, 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 the re, um, uh, opening of schools. Thanks very much, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Honorable Dabin. Honorable Mukhaga? Yes, on Mkaka. On our Mkaka. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, colleagues, officials of the department, as led by SG. I said the afternoon. Now. Chair. I've edited the questions. Uh, 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 we had a lot of questions, but there were a lot of presentations. I'll just highlight, focus to the highlight. The first of all, the matter of life and death to the parents of our children in this province. And I want to repeat this. First of all, life and death to the life to the, to the parents of our children. I'm ready to do this because France already has registered plus or minus 70 cases of learners after they are open, they are of school. 
And therefore, and, 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 and that statement becomes important in that context. Just the first question is, when are you going to orientate about the new developments in relation to the reopening of schools? When are you going to orientate both SGPs and teachers to understand exactly the information you are sharing with us now? To informed by social distance. I did ask this question last time. Informed by social distance. In short, what is the teacher pupil ratio? Now, as you have determined, and, and the social distance in our classes, what's going to be the teacher pupil ratio in our classes, both in primary schools and in senior secondary schools? And I don't want the generalization here so that we understand we have a picture of what's going to happen in a classroom situation when those learners have occupied those classrooms. What's going to be the teacher pupil ratio um, and, 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 and as informed by, 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 by social distance and, 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 and as a stance uh, uh, today? Um, the third one, what is the stance of our social partners in the province in relation to the reopening of schools. What is the stance of our social, your social partners in the province, I'm referring to students, teachers, and other organizations? What is their stance in relation to 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 to, 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 to the set date uh, of the first of 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 um, The fourth one, Chair, is in relation to if there is a detection of a virus in either of the schools, if there is a detection of a virus, what must happen to that school? I'm raising this because I've seen hospitals closed down. I've seen chain stores closed down just to detect one case or two cases in that particular institution. In our schools, what's going to happen if there is a detection of a virus in a particular school? What steps must be taken by a school and what's going to happen to that particular school uh, in relation to, 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 to that? Um, um, the whole question of equality assurance. I understand that our school must be fumigated, decontaminated, Etc. Excellent. There's a relationship between Department of Education and Health Department. But who ultimately must approve that now the situation has been addressed? Where there's fumigation uh, or, or decontamination, who ultimately must approve and, 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 and give a nod that, look, now the school could be reused again or, or whatever, if the school is ready and, and therefore uh, 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 teaching can continue. Transport, must I be worried, must I be worried um, about um, 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 the, the, the contracting of, of, of private, service, private service providers by transport? And I know it might be difficult, but in your own assessment, do you think transport will be able to meet your targets as Department of Education? Um, um, I'm raising this from your experience okay, um, um, in relation to this. I won't dwell much on the question of the transport because I understand uh, many problems and challenges that are still uh, confronting that department. Infrastructure. Must I be worried about water and sanitation and PPEs provision um, um, in relation to your targets? Must I be worried? You've made a presentation um, and, and, and a couple of questions that one could raise, but must I be worried um, and, and about you providing water, sanitation, and PPEs on time? Must I be worried? Or I must relax uh, because you're going to meet your targets. 
uh, uh, in relation to, 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 to that. Um, last year, uh, exams. In 1977, well, this is not the first time. In 1977 and 1980, we didn't write examination in Port Elizabeth. That was during the apartheid. Because of the riots, etc., etc., schools were bent down, etc., etc. But exams were shifted in 1980, shifted from November to February. Why did you consider that option instead of forcing? your programs, uh, squeezing your program in this financial year, uh, that is 2020. Why didn't you shift, consider that you, 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 you consider writing examination during the first quarter of, 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 of 2021 um, and, and, and then on the 1st of April, uh, uh, start a new financial year uh, or academic year going down, uh, having prepared properly around this part like this. Do you think this one would, 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 would necessarily uh, uh, give results that are credible enough um, uh, for, for a grade? Yeah. Thanks, Chair. I think the Department and Honor Mkhaka, this question, remember, is a, the issue of exams is a national competence. So I think instead of asking this question, you are sponsoring a proposal in uh, because there's a province, in my view, I don't think they can alone decide on this matter, but we want to get their reaction to your proposal in terms of shifting yeah. the date of exams. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. For me, uh, let me add my voice to what our members have appreciated, uh, SG and you, MEC. At least now, your presentations are more clear on some of the key areas that have been there. That does mean that uh, we, we don't have questions, further strengthen some of the areas that we found to be weak. The same thing that I want to remind you, Department and the MEC, is your overarching objectives of dealing with COVID-19, so far as education is concerned. The two objectives that you said one is to save lives, two is to flatten the cap to COVID-19, and three is to save the academic year, which therefore means the last objective is dependent on your work on the first two major objectives. So whatever you are doing, you must be informed by the work that we shall have done here on the first two, you know, objectives of the, of the department. Uh, in addition to the questions that have been asked, on infrastructure, if I had missed the well, that they can continue with their work on damaged schools because of uh, the level, uh, the level I let level four in terms of disaster management act. But I want to <clears throat> bring to the attention of uh, the department that in terms of the current regulations on this disaster act, management act, table one, part four, it indicates clearly that work that can be done by the Department of Public Works on engineering, on maintenance, as well as, well as on roads and bridge projects, may continue even during this lockdown period. Therefore, if he said the reason why they cannot continue is because of this, I think they are missing the point because it's permissible in terms of lockdown level four for them to continue that way. The second question that I want to have is that in your presentations, our understanding of the committee is that your focus now is on your face in approach, which therefore means for grades 7 and 12, you must have be clearly 
having the number of schools that will be affected, the number of learners, and the number of educators that will be affected when this based in approach is activated. Therefore, the issues of decontamination, the issue of PPEs, and everything else must be in terms of the current numbers. Right? That must what must guide you, in my view, in your responses. That's our area of focus now. If we are targeting first of June, so that is going to be able to help us to be clearly understanding what your plan is going forward. Now, on PPEs, in terms of your presentation, you said by the 25th of this month, you will be awarding those contracts. But in terms of the pronouncement by the national minister, by the 25th of May, educators are expected back in schools. Remember, these contracts are for decontamination and are for, for delivery of PPEs. Two, we are indicating that by the 26th of May, those providers, providers appointed will be in schools, which therefore it has a, is a contradiction to your first objective of saving lives, ensuring that everything is prepared before you can say you are reopening in a phase. So I want you to take note of that. The solution that I want to have is that you don't talk about the need to appoint a team of auditors. I just want to check are the team of auditors, uh, how are they going to be appointed? Through how much monetary wise will be utilized for these team of auditors and the period that they will be employed if they are people from outside. Four, on the number of uh, people that responded to the contracts on the decontamination and fumigation of schools and buildings, we have said those that have, have responded are 1,453. Further down your breakdown, you said those that met the deadline were 13,333. And certainly, you know, submitted their own, you know, quotations very late. Therefore, what I've seen, I'm seeing a discrepancy in terms of the figures there, because when we add 13,333 and 708, it gives you 14,000. 113, not 14,153. So I want you to be clinical about that. Clarify that that, 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 that anomaly that is there. The third issue that I want to raise on concerning the same matter of the decontamination is that already I've got a, a, a one principal that sent a message to me that yesterday he was, he was approached by a company called Bitvest, indicating that he has been, it has been appointed uh, to come and to contaminate and fumigate the school. Today's date is the 22nd of May, so 21st of May. Yet in your plan, you said by the 25th, you shall be appointing those service providers. So I want to be clear about that. And also, why do you think that uh, by now we have people saying they've been awarded? So I want to follow that up because to me it's not clear. The only issue that is not making me to be clear about this is this. I know Bitvest is the national company uh, in the province. Does it mean that uh, you can't have companies that can be able to, uh, than to prefer a company that is an outsider? That is what I want you to clarify. The fourth, uh, third area, that, uh, fifth area that I need to clarify to me is that you say in terms of people that are under investigation, after being that uh, they will be uh, they'll wait in a holding room in a school. This therefore indicates presupposes that it means all schools in the province do have holding rooms, yet you don't have that. There will be a case of a school where there's no holding room. How will a person that is suspected to be supposed to be referred for testing 
it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be kept even this picture also you're not indicating your report what is going to happen to those that will be found in your offices head office districts institutes and so forth we're well, only talking about schools here are you going to follow the same thing in other offices of the department um In your report again on the issue of the scholar transport, you have said the information was supposed to be updated by the 13th of May, and in your report, you have not indicated whether that information has been updated. Again, in terms of the learner numbers for scholar transport of grade 7 and 12, you have said this is information to be verified by the 15th of May, but in your report, you have not indicated whether this has, has happened or not. Uh, the third, the third, the, 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 the sixth area here on the same question of scholar transport is that even the fact that scholar uh, transport has to meet the current lockdown regulation that it is not going to have 100% occupancy rate, it's going to have 70%. What plans do we have as a department to ensure that on the current number of vehicles that have been contracted by the Department of Transport, they will meet the need of more of them because if it is a 15 seater, you know. A combi. It means now it has to it has to care about maybe eight learners as against the 15 seater. So what lens we have in terms of sure that this is going to happen in our discussion with the Department of uh, Transport. For me, this is these are the questions that I had, so that uh, as the department you are able therefore to respond to these questions. SG, you can set up your team to respond. MEC. The only question that that, that uh, was directed to you is, was the one from Honorable Kasim, uh, according to what he said, that uh, you failed to respond to his uh, correspondence on the issue of uh, learners to be given their schooling education program while they are at home. And you never responded to that. So that's a question that you can answer. Yeah. SG. That letter was sent to the MEC. To the MEC. Yes. Yes, and I'm saying he must respond to that. Yes, Jay? Okay, I'll say it No. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Chair, Honorable <coughs> Members. Once more, the, the appreciation of the, the strengthening of our uh, monitoring instrument because this presentation is giving you an overview of the areas uh, that would be monitoring to say what are those areas if we say we've got a wall-to-wall -wall plan what what is really do we mean will we be able to reach the targets that we have set there i think that's what the, the basic questions are saying because the, the reality is that a a a, a pronouncement has been made that schools are opening on the first. That is precisely why we decided to have a, a presentation that is talking to, to all to all. Let me start uh, by really uh, making an indication that by tomorrow, you will see a fund, and that's why we say by tomorrow, some of the aspects will be different uh, from today because there'll be a lot of improvement. There are a lot of teams that are currently working, not only at the level of the province, but at the level of the district. So there's a lot of work that is currently happening. So the updating of the information will be uh, something that is, is, is ongoing. So we'll appreciate uh, to, to, to come back or to send um, the, 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 the progress report on key fundamental areas. Let me just uh, indicate, we have not appointed any company. I think the, the principal who sent you the, um, the information that uh, Bitvest was appointed to fumigate any school was not appointed by this department. What this, okay. department, did, the, what this department did was after we, we, we got a shock when the uh, national contract was uh, uh, withdrawn, we had immediately the following day put uh, supply chain processes for us to ensure that we procure uh, these PPEs uh, within, the, within those, those, those uh, frameworks because there is no other way 
that you can simply procure over a short period of time unless you must follow specific regulations. What we have done in the province of the Eastern Cape, that's why numbers are so huge. We have made it to be district-based, right? So submission of these uh, uh, by providers are district-based so that it becomes easier for the distribution of the PPEs. So they will not be central uh, in the level of the province and you start to know it will be, and the appointment of the providers will also be district based so that it is easy for them to distribute uh, these, these PPEs. In my presentation, I indicated that there will be different phases of the delivery of the PPEs. I spoke about the, the first cohort of the PPEs that will be, will, will be, will be uh, delivered, taking into cognizant that the people that will be there in the, in, on Monday will only be teachers, right? It means that the, the number of PPEs and, and everything will focus on the people that will be there on Monday. So I think that, that I'm just clarifying uh, that particular process because the, pro, the provisioning of the PPE and, and the delivery model, we have structured it in that way so that there is more participation uh, of, of local uh, uh, people in, within, within this, so that the, 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 ease, the, the economy of the province uh, is able to, we need to focus on, on that particular modality. Uh, in terms, so I agree with you that uh, the phase in approach uh, it, it will be, uh, is helping us to say uh, we can do it better in a phase in approach. So grade 12 and grade 7, yes, learner numbers has been, have been determined uh, as well as the, the schools. We, because we're communicating directly with uh, a, a district, working collaboratively, even to look at the social distance, because the key issue for us is that if you are talking a secondary school, you have got only grade 12, they can be able to occupy uh, uh, classes, because it is not about the teacher pupil ratio. Is about the class size, which is and the and the and the social distance. That is what we are talking about because you've got the school uh, to yourself to 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 utilize uh, in, in that in that regard. You are correct, Chair, that the overarching principle is safety first, and that is why, as a department, we 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 ensured that we will not hurry up, even if the province is said to be red. Uh, other provinces were ready uh, then. We said in the province, we, we, we focus on us providing these predetermined issues before we can say that schools will, 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 will be open. So that overarching principle, uh, we are keeping it uh, in terms so that we, we don't simply, we even, you know, if you look at those schools that don't have at all uh, toilets completely, right, any form. Those schools will be, for us, it will be at level five. <clears throat> level five for us means we can't open such schools, right? Instead, you must find a mechanism of taking those learners to the nearby school, right? So that we can be able to ensure that we, we look at the issue of health and safety of our children. So that principle is there. And, and as I'm speaking to you, all district directors are in meetings, they're providing plans to the DFs so that whatever we're telling you at the level of the province, there are a lot of explaining uh, uh, below. Now, coming to Honorable Mkhaka, I think you, you, you are right about whether should you be worried uh, about certain things. We are worried as well. We are worried. You see, you are dealing with a novel uh, pandemic. COVID-19 is worrying not only yourself uh, or, 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 or certain people, it's worrying everybody within ourselves because that's a health, health matter. Uh, it doesn't, because nobody is immune uh, from, 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 from having this. So we are all worried. But the emphasis is that we as the department, we are putting measures in place to ensure the safety of our people. Yes. The, the, the presentation on scholar transport has been presented. 
We are not going to lie here and tell you things that are not true. We have our team in the department. It's structured the relationship between us and the Department of Transport. is led by the chief director, uh, the one who are presenting, and, and she went further to say that the last meeting took place yesterday. So the report that you have, you can see that's going to be uh, improved so that we can be able to give you data as and when we, 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 are, we, we are communicating this. Yes, we are equally worried about the provision of water and sanitation because that is a requirement uh, that we need to, to do. We are constantly to, talking to, to DPE because we ourselves, we are worried because it takes time for the slab to dry if you are going to put a tank on it. That's why we are co communicating with, with, uh, with, with DPE to say, we, we, you can't open such schools that I need uh, of, 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 of water tanks and water uh, to, 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 to delay. So it's not as if we're sitting down as a, as a province. We are not looking into the processes. Yes, we are. We are looking into all of, all of these matters. We were, we were able to, in our presentation, speak about orientation. We did. Because we didn't say that uh, we will provide this thing without orientation. Within the plan, there is orientation. And we were able to provide you with dates on how, the, the, or when and, and how will we be able to, uh, to conduct the orientation. Yes, we are monitoring all what we are saying because there are teams, as we speak, that are conducting those orientation. Even myself, I'm supposed after this engagement, go through the same uh, orientation because the dates are put there for us to follow in terms of being orientated. Yeah, I think it is it is very very important that uh, the, for us to say wh what is the what is the, uh, uh, the the issue between us and uh, the social partners. Uh, look, I said if, right from the beginning when we were confronted with this particular uh, uh, when there was a, a declaration of a, a pandemic first uh, internationally, we convened quickly a meeting with social partners even before the state of, in, of, of disaster was declared. And subsequently, we agreed uh, ourselves with our social partners to form a committee that is meeting regularly. I said it's once per week. I even in that on, on, on Saturday, we are going to be meeting with that because we are a committee. Well, we don't work alone uh, in this regard. We will really appreciate some of the things that you see us talking to is because of the contribution of social partners. And when we talk about social partners, we are not talking about only unions. I'm talking about also about school governing body association. All of them in the province are part of that of the committee that we have set up. Uh, so, 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 so. When you see us having improved our presentation, it is because we have taken into cognizance their concerns and are able to say, this is how we are uh, going to uh, 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 look at, uh, at a plan, at an improved plan. It's because of the contribution by uh, uh, the social partners. I, I think it, it because we, we, we all value life and, and we know that this issue is about life and death, but certainly, we, we can't simply, as a department, not do anything. We must be able to be always constantly be doing something. I even mentioned in my opening remarks that we have been communicating with our principals. We have been issuing out instruction notes. And with the contribution of our, our social partners, we agreed that, uh, as far back as last year, by the way, that the municipality services money must be sent to schools. We agreed. And already we, we, we paid those municipal services uh, for, since last year. Last week, again, we transferred uh, the, the funds for norms and standards uh, to the majority of schools uh, in the province, 50% of which is covering 
uh, funds for municipality services to all our schools. So <laughs> it is no longer centralized. We've got also within the norms and standards funds, funds for the, the maintenance of our schools. So that has been sent so that schools themselves uh, can be able to see what, how best they utilize the funds. But what we, we talk about is those areas of responsibilities that we are carrying as a department, inclusive of, I mean, some of the schools have got uh, municipal service like water tank, uh, water, uh, tap water, and the rest, and the rest. Those that, that they, are, they, are, they are going to get uh, through, through this particular provision, through the, through the norms and standards. You, I think, uh, we, 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 Honorable Dabe, the, the, the issue for us is that there are a lot of uh, permutations that we are dealing with as, 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 as a province. And there are service providers who are approaching us on a regular basis to say this is what we can do in terms of connectivity in rural areas. Now, knowing that this is government and how government operates, uh, we have started a process of officials of government looking into various providers that are, are, are within particular spaces around con connectivity. Centec is one uh, of such that improves connectivity. But the, I must say that I've been in contact with a number of providers uh, that, that improves connectivity over and above you as providing uh, SIM cards and tablets to our children. Because there are those areas uh, within our rural areas that really, there, there is no, no signal. So there is something that we're doing uh, in, in, in that regard. We, we, we have uh, ensured uh, that uh, we, we, we look into the, 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 the lockdown uh, regulations because the lockdown regulations are nationally determined, right? President would say we are now, with, through the National Command Council, we are now at this particular level. Right now, we are in, that part, in this particular level. Those they are national determ de determinants through the national uh, uh, council. So I'm trying to say that our plans are designed such in such a manner that they respond to what uh, the, the, the the directives are saying uh, uh, nationally, and we participate in terms of ensuring that the sector is able to prepare itself uh, uh, in, in, in in that regard. Well, I, I agree with you about the key messaging that we must constantly look into. <clears throat> yes, we will we'll take that advice that uh, that package around communication uh, between the public and the schools. We will we will check up uh, communication uh, in, 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 in that regard. Uh, to honor the water, the, uh, I'm just touching up some of the key areas. Then colleagues are going to come in. You, you are correct on reporter that we, we the, the plans that we are putting here in place are plans to to ensure that the system they are the determinant whether the system is ready for the opening of schools right and i'm saying to you we are monitoring and we are at work 24 7. we're not sleeping 24 7 we are hands-on virtually on each and every area here I, I've indicated that on Saturday we're meeting with uh, the, the, the committee's meeting just to, to, to see through what other areas we need to, to strengthen you, so, so that we are able to allay the fears of everybody's fear. They are as for the fear. And, 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 it, and that is a reality. But it is how best you can, can give comfort to, 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 to the people by ensuring that uh, issues of safety come first. Yes, the screening teams. You, 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 I think we take wisdom from what uh, you, you are saying, uh, Mr. Bo Honorable Botter, that we, you need to, to, to tighten your screening teams. And as a department, as well as well as here, we will be communicating with our principals so that we recruit young uh, uh, people within the communities to come and be, and be part of, 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 the, of the community of the school in order to do screening as well as uh, uh, issues around cleaning uh, of our schools because it becomes better that 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 is area is identified by school principals that is in progress already 
we'll be writing letters to all principals to say that let that process be, be let let us uh, so we take uh, your, 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 your advice in, in that regard so that we ensure that everything happens within that locality uh, where, the, where, the, where, the, where the school is at. Honorable, I think, Honorable uh, uh, Kutsi, you, 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 you are correct that uh, uh, there, there must be a better way for us to fast track the, uh, the training and, uh, and communication around uh, uh, PPEs so that we are comfortable between now and, and the 1st of, of June. We must, we, there must be a, so that's why we're developing a checklist to say, are we really ready by the first? So this plan is giving a checklist upon which we are going to test ourselves as a department and you who, and, and the other members who are conducting an oversight would be able to use the same uh, a checklist to say, this is what you said. Have you been able to do this thing? And you be coming back and advising us uh, you know, as you are doing the oversight, advising us to say, this you are not doing well here. We are proposing the following in order for the province of the Eastern Cape to be in par with, with, with the rest of other provinces um, uh, in this. Class. So there the, 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 the is a, 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 that a area that we, we took from, from yourself to say, let's strengthen that. Uh, we, we, we really apologize on the issue that the the that there would be many documentation. It's true that we need to we need to, co to communicate constantly. That is why I said there are instruction notes that we have sent out to principals. We will be communicating with them uh, uh, constantly, but they are still going to be communication per different unit to ensure that everybody is on board in terms of uh, of this particular plan. Yes, uh, uh, I think colleagues are going to come in in terms of uh, giving details on 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 other areas. Honourable Fiftan, I think you 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 are you are quite right that let us strengthen our plans and ensure that we we are ready for the first. I think this is what you are saying to us that let's do everything that we can as a province to ensure that we are ready on the first. So, so, so that we are also giving you information on a regular basis uh, in this regard. And the issue of over 60 years, you are correct. We needed to, to have at least mechanisms that looks into those that are over 60 and even those that are under 60. I indicated that because there are three forms that, 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 that I displayed in the, in, in the report. Because those people that even are under uh, uh, 60, that have got certain illnesses that are defined within COVID, uh, that form is, uh, uh, has been prov provided. Now, we will not provide only one uh, 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 thermometer to per, per school. The maximum that we are going per school is five, because we're looking into the sizes of the school. So we're not going to give only one. Uh, a thermometer, and honestly, I mean, the, if the, if there are issues, because that's a thermometer, it's like something that is written. Should anything happen, they will be able to look at others if if maybe it's broken, and they'll be able to inform the department uh, to say we've got this this one, and we'll be able to 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 to, to support uh, in in that regard. So we are communicating with our principals uh, regularly. In terms of this particular plan, as we are tabling to yourself, we will be able to, talk to, we have sent it as well to our district to, to communicate with our circuit managers and principals. But we don't only end there. We ensure that ourselves at the level of the province, we communicate with our principals uh, uh, on, on a constant basis. By the way, Honorable we are getting feedback from the principals. Our principals are talking to us they are able to say that we want to pay our people. Please, can you ensure that you write a, a, us a letter so that we can go to schools and do this thing? That we have done is because we are in constant communication uh, uh, with, with, with our, our principals. Honorable Kasim, you, you, raised, you, you raised questions. What we have done with all the questions that were sent uh, 
uh, to us. We have responded to. We received a, a set of questions from from from, from, from yourselves that side from, from the committee, and I ensure that we, we respond and we we submitted and there was a confirmation that that uh, you 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 looked uh, 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 those from from our, our, ourselves. Yes, I agree in terms of the the um, the, the analysis that we need to do uh, because of of all of these matters that we raise around sanitation and and and, and the projects that uh, we are supposed to be dealing with. I think the the, the, the section on, on on our section on on infrastructure will be able to to respond on some of the things that you 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 are, you are coming in. You are also correct about social distance uh, when other grades are coming. We are one because it's more about levels. We don't know what when maybe you are in level two or in level one. What does it mean in terms of social distancing? So these all of these issues were taken into account. So in terms of level five and level four, we understood that social distance uh, is, is one point five, but there are study measures that at all material time you, you you must be your mask must be on so that you don't infect other people i think that's that that is the essence of of, of the messaging uh, that, that 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 was there could you listen that 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 you 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 raised a, a, a question about about it and and i i think we, we we as a department when we were under level five I, I responded to you to say that we are getting responses from the National Command Council to say it's total lockdown. That was my, my our response. Now that minister has made a determination, right, on level four, what is it that you ought to do? We are responding accordingly as a province. And remember what we said. We are getting funds, because this is a grant fund, right? At the time of your question, that money was not deposited to us as the province. We didn't get that, that allocation from TP because that's a grant, grant fund. That allocation was not sent to us. We have just received it now, resend uh, the, uh, 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 the, the money for us to, to do what we, are, what we are supposed to be. That's why. Uh, the, the, the chief director concern indicated what are the modalities that TPE is guiding us uh, 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 to do. Because I, I, I remember I, I, I was the one who responded. Up. Even, the, even at the national level, this uh, issue was raised by Western Cape, right? And the minister in other provinces were debating it, uh, this issue of feeding learners, whereas we are at level five. Because at, the, at that time, it was a high risk for us to, to do this thing because we had to be informed by specialists, uh, 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 by health specialists who say, this you can do, this you can't do. Now, I think it, 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 it yes, uh, on, on the, uh, around that consortium of, of, of monitors uh, uh, that the minister spoke about, yes, we, we, we know. We have been given the, 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 the uh, we received a letter that uh, those monitors would be coming down. They wanted a name of our official uh, in the department uh, through through DPE, who from our department, who from from the province, will be representing us. Doctor Nogu will be representing representing us. So that consortium that will be monitoring uh, of of the auditors will be conducting with Doctor Nogu. This is a national competency, it's not us. So there are no funds that are involved from our side. Uh, I wanted just, just to indicate uh, 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 that we, 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 we really <clears throat> uh, are, are looking at, I'm sure, uh, Honorable Pile, you, 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 you are spot on about the difficulty that all of us are finding ourselves in. And, and, and we, we take comfort around that screening should, should take place on a regular basis. That is why we said that the resources, the human resources that we have uh, in the department, let's deploy where it matters most. And, and I think, I think that, that, that one is, 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 is clear. We will be uh, 
in terms of your grade, grade 12 uh, mediation uh, and support, that plan was issued, I think it was instruction num note number 14, that we issued out to say, that this has been constant communication while during the lockdown, has been constant communication supporting the, the learners. And, 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 and subject advisors have been doing it quite perfect to say, how do you support our learners through various means of us communicating with, 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 with our learners? We will continue to uh, uh, with, with, this, with our program in terms of the business continuity, uh, post and beyond uh, 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 COVID. The, 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 you, you are correct about the verification of submission by district. Uh, it is because once you get any information from the district, you don't take it as it, as it is. That's why you, you, you see that the number of tanks that are required vis-a-vis what has been verified that we are delivering. It's just that a school will say, I need a tank, only to find that that school has got a airport, a running airport. Uh, so, in essence, it is not a school that is deserving to have to have a, 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 so we do verification of the submissions uh, uh, in that regard. The food parcel uh, issue, we I think the chief director was able to respond to say how we are going to manage it. It's such that we will be our children will be staggered in terms of the collection of the food parcel. They won't come at a go, um, and 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 this is this is something that we, we in the plan. We, 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 are, we have clarified. Uh, Honorable Duba, yes, you are correct that we do have a, a team of forensic auditors who are external. In my presentation, I indicated that there is a team that is evaluating all the submissions that we received. Right? And we, you must remember that we are working with the, with the instruction note number five of the national treasure. We have put in IT specialists, uh, supply chain uh, uh, colleagues, and we've put in internal audit, and we put in ICU, for which is ICU for us is called internal controls. They are busy dealing with this thing internally, but over and above that, we received a list from national from the provincial treasury, a panel of forensic auditors, and we nominate from that particular panel of forensic auditors that uh, the, the, the provincial treasury has. And we have contracted one of those forensic auditors uh, to, 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 to help us with, the, with, with, this, uh, with this particular process. Uh, uh, the CFO will, will expand more about the details uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, the, the details around them. You, you also correct that if you look at HR matters, we did indicate which areas have got uh, a huge uh, rate of uh, uh, over 60s and, and the rest. And the plan is, is such that we, we because we're not going to take, if you talk about office-based, I said for office-based, some officials can remain at home and work on, at, from, 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 from home, whilst others will be at, at work. And we're saying it, it, it goes in line with the, the, the system that we're putting in place to say, bring in only a third to, 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 to the workplace so that work of government continues. It does not stop, right? And we're to also talking, we're talking there about rotational basis. That was, was part. Yes, you are correct about um, the, us having developed the occupational health and safety committees so that issues of health and structures, uh, there is an interface um, from the level of the, of the province. I even said that we have already appointed officials, we have developed roles and responsibilities using the DPSA guidelines, circulated it, and those committees are functional, by the way, here at this level, and also at the level of the districts, that is in place. If you talk, talk about isolation of learners, we, we, what we are saying as a department is that we've got a number of classrooms that can be used for uh, screening, that can be used for uh, putting uh, children aside. Yes, you, we take your advice that uh, those children 
that uh, uh, have got uh, certain symptoms for, for, for us to refer, uh, you, we take the advice to say, have a mechanism in place on how you refer them and support them to go to, 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 to whatever. Uh, so we take that advice that have a system in place so that those children are assisted once they've been identified uh, to have one of those or a, a number of those uh, areas of 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 of, of responsibility of, of uh, uh, illnesses we we, we 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 i think this uh, presentation that i have given given you is at least a checklist that determines how that we are is for us to update it regularly to say what are the areas that are not inside here, like the one that you honor honor to you you have you have, you have, you have uh, uh, spoken to to, to to us about. We will pro we will uh, I mean talk to DPE to get to give us a full report uh, around the supply of of these water tanks and the delivery uh, uh, thereof. Uh, as well speaking, speaking, other colleagues are working with DPE so that we can provide so that we are all comfortable in the province in terms of uh, uh, the provision of those water tanks um, uh, as such. I have, we've spoken at length about the psychosocial support. The psychosocial support is not only for learners, it's also for the teachers. We, I even said that we will provide people with uh, the uh, special psychologist where anyone at the school level can phone in so that we, we've got a way to, to support them. Uh, because all of us have got fear. Uh, and it is important for us to make to have a mitigation strategy uh, that deals, deals, deals with the same. I'm going to hand over to other colleagues to really come in and, uh, and, and, uh, and speak on the areas that have not uh, touched uh, honorable chair. I want to request that, uh, that uh, those members of your team who are going to respond to some of the outstanding questions, if their response will be the submission of the updated information, uh, in, in, I mean, updated information, they do so. Otherwise, we are beyond uh, our allocated time. We still have one <coughs> item that we have not yet tackled. Who's the next one to respond? <laughs> uh, uh, Yes, MEC. Yeah, it seems as if uh, they are covered, unless there are follow-up questions, and uh, then I wrap the discussion from that particular end. Okay. Members, and are there any follow-up questions? Because unfortunately, I did not uh, take all of them when we were, we were asking them. Uh, chair, yes, one, just two, honourable chair from Sultani. Yes, honourable Sultani, yes, and followed by honourable Kassel. Oh, thanks, much, honourable chair. It's about chair water, honourable chair. I wanted to know how frequently will the department refill tanks in schools to make sure that there is ongoing provision for sanitation. Uh, purposes. And I also wanted to know, okay. lastly, how early, how are they going to change the starting times in schools to make sure that there will be sufficient time for screening as everybody enters the school? Thanks for the opportunity, Honorable Chair. Thank you. Honorable Kasim? Uh, Chair, uh, just before I get into any follow-up questions, uh, there were a couple of questions that I'd just like to ask it's not been responded to but before that chair uh, the 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 sg has said that uh, questions that were put in writing to him have been responded to now i know that in the next session we're going to be dealing with something like uh, you know some of those questions um but that is not what was being referred to it was not questions that were put in writing it was verbal questions that were made in the previous meeting that were not responded to uh, by the department at the time. And the commitment given was that they have noted down those questions, like normally they give the, they, they then respond in writing, and they would uh, listen or watch the uh, recording of the meeting if they have missed any questions that they did not respond to. We've not gotten uh, those responses, Chair, unless 
I've not received them, but I know we've not got uh, the, the secretary have not gotten those responses. Yes, so I would like to still get those responses. Just in terms of uh, this meeting, chair, I've not received uh, the responses from infrastructure. So I know the MEC is saying that his team are saying that they are covered, but I would still like to get that response regarding my questions on sanitation. I know that the SG in his response said infrastructure will respond. Uh, so if we can get that response. Uh, the second one, Chair, I don't know if we've received the actual date. Maybe I'm missing it every time, but just a direct answer. Which date will the PPE arrive for teachers? Which date will the PPE arrive uh, for learners? And, the, and then, Chair, in terms of the saving, the cost saving for scholar transport and SM, uh, uh, scholar nutrition program, because of the months where that was not being uh, provided, what is the cost saving of the department and where is that money going to be uh, deployed? And then just one follow-up question, Chair, and then I will, I will, I will close my, my input. I've heard the response of the SG uh, as it pertains to why he, he responded that they could not provide these food parcels as they are going to provide now for the learners that are at home. And I disagree with that, uh, Chair. Because what was being discussed at the time by, uh, uh, you know, the different provinces is about the physical provision of meals like the Western Cape had gone to do whilst learners coming to fetch meals at schools. Um, what we were proposing, uh, Chair, was this same thing, option B, of food parcels. Now, social development were doing food parcels. Uh, under level five, there would have been nothing that would have prevented the Department of Education to work with social development on the budgets that were already allocated to schools. We're not talking about additional uh, uh, grant funding. We're talking about the budgets that were already allocated to schools for the school nutrition program, uh, for that to be used to buy school uh, 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 nutritional supplies, whatever could be bought you know, with the money available, and to be then, even if the social uh, Department of Social Development had to be given the list to do that delivery, because they were allowed to do it. There was nothing under level five that disallows them from doing it, uh, to then do it at the time. That is what makes me angry, Chair, because I, d I don't think uh, that these issues and there are dire issues that affect our learners, uh, uh, when we are raising them, they are taken as seriously. Okay, all right. SG, on the follow up questions, can you respond? Um, Chair. Chair. Thank you very much. You are not part of the list of people that wanted to ask you some questions. But let me allow you there to, to, to speak. Hold on, SG. No, Chair. Yeah. Yes. Chair. No, Chair. Around this issue of teacher pupil ratio, I'm moving from the premise that enrollments of all schools are known by the Department of Education. Yes. And 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 therefore they are in a position of working out social distance in order to determine teacher pupil ratio per each school, unless otherwise. My question was on the basis of that, that as you phase in other grades, what then becomes your determined teacher pupil ratio for schools? Because well, schools have got teacher pupil ratio right now, but those rest of teacher pupil ratio are not in line with the with the with the with the current COVID uh, and, and, and arrangement. Just now, but my question was along those lines, uh, uh, Chair. Secondly, okay. appointment additional personnel. Many schools don't have um, 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 even security. Um, um, are they considering during this phase additional personnel for schools? Thanks, Chair. All right. Uh, SG. Uh, 
Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. The, let now respond. The, the, the colleagues are going to come in so that we wrap up all these questions that are for this session. Right? Okay. okay. Uh, I think the, the issue of the refill of water and how often, what we are doing as a department, uh, I've indicated that we have transferred funds of the norms and standards for municipality services. We saw that schools can be able for themselves to be able to have water. But what we are saying for the coming three months, we will be providing to those schools that don't have water, uh, uh, that, that, that don't have water and they don't have tanks. That's what the intervention is about for a period of three months. But schools themselves have money for, 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 for this. So we'll do, it, we'll do it for three months, and then schools can be able to continue uh, refilling uh, 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 water or, uh, 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 as they have got funds. You, I think the, 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 the issue of uh, sufficient time to screening, you are correct that if you've got a pool of uh, uh, people, uh, uh, young people in, in the school who can be able to do this, it helps a great deal for them to do the screening of, of learners. But that affects, you are correct, uh, the timetabling of the schools. So principals of the schools will be able to manage that at that particular level. We do not want to determine and regulate up to that extent. So uh, that, that, that's my response, uh, Honorable Filtani, with regard to, to, to your issues. Uh, uh, I think uh, the Honorable Kasim once more again, uh, uh, my sincere uh, apologies because we did not get the, the recordings. Uh, if we said, we were taking notes ourselves. We will follow up on that uh, and see how best do we do we deal with those. We'll request maybe uh, if we can get uh, the recordings of the previous meeting uh, from 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 the secretariat, so that we can see what are those questions that because I, I responded to say that maybe they were consolidated in the form of written. Uh, so so if. If I, I've, I've, I've answered wrongly, my, my sincere apologies. Uh, the, the, the PPEs for, 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 for teachers, the, the one of infrastructure, asked Sepo just to respond on that one. The date for the teachers, I've indicated in my presentation that we're targeting the date of the 24th and the 25th so that they can, be, because the model that we have utilized as a province is that these self providers must be at the at the level of the districts, closer to where schools are. So that if, for instance, today, as property is done, that can be done very quickly. We've got, that is for, for the first cohort uh, of, of the PPEs. Then the second cohort and other cohort of, of PPEs will be de delivered next week, so that it's a lead time for, for for, 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 for the learners uh, when they come. Um, uh, let, let me come to your question around the saving, uh, the savings or on the cost for scholar transport uh, 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 as well as the uh, as school, school nutrition. Uh, remember that even if you say that schools have their money in their own banks, uh, because I can see the day in which there was a closure I'm, I'm relating between the closure of schools at, at that time, as well as the lockdown. You, the, there might have been in some schools some some money left, uh, but, they, but anyway, schools were about to close. Uh, anyway, at that, that period, when we were going for a a state of disaster was was being declared by the state state president. Now, certainly from the grant fund for this financial year, that starts from April. We have just received that grant fund, right? Because it was not deposited before, wherein the department could have done anything based on your advice, where you, when you said, please take that money. It was not there in April because it was not transferred 
by DBE to 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 us for scholar transport for for school nutrition. Yes, there might be saving on on, on scholar transport uh, because funds for for scholar transport are with the uh, Department of, of of Transport. And I don't want to 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 lie here and say how much saving is there in this meeting. I can only find out that there is this particular savings. And I will come back to you and say, with those savings that are there, this is how creatively can you utilize or, or, or redirect the funds. But as I'm seated here, I don't have those figures with me to say for scholar transport, this is the case. And I must, I must emphasize that at level five, there was real lockdown. It's difficult for, for me to, to overrule the, 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 the national comma and say, this we are going to do it this way. Because we, could, we, we had a meeting, by the way, uh, Honorable uh, Kasim, during that period, we had a meeting with social development to say, how best can we do this thing? But the reality was that social development says, okay, if you've got this money, where's the money? We cannot take the money that's already in school, which is many minimum. We are supposed to be transferring that allocation for April to social development, which was not there. Now, now I, I, I think, uh, Honorable Mkhaka, you, 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 your question uh, is, is around us knowing. Yes, we know, because our data system in the department is put on about, that's why we on time were able to give schools they are uh, uh, the, 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 the declaration. Eh? So we, 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 know, we, we know that. Now, because of social distancing, the determination is only grade 12 and grade 7 that must come. Right? Only grade 12. So that we've got a number of educators that can be at school supporting, supporting those learners. And the key question that you are raising about what will happen when other phases come in? If that is mind boggling to all of us uh, uh, in the sector uh, because we don't know what will be the standards of health. Uh, we will be saying, let's say we go at level three, will social distance be the, at the same? If it is at the same, really we are facing a crisis to say that we needed to provide more teachers uh, at, that, at that particular time. Say, Let's provide more teachers because of social distancing. That calculation, we have not made, made it. I must be honest with you. We have not made it if the current social distance will be maintained, uh, if other grades are coming in. And I take it to that you are giving us an advice that the HR must already prepare itself for that particular uh, 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 eventuality. You are also correct in terms of saying that many schools don't have security. It is equally true that many schools don't have admin support in their schools. Equally true. And I've been, I've been responding to this question about the, the allocation that we get in terms of the ratio between the supply of the teachers and the supply of the support staff. Uh, in schools. That is why we have been able to say if the ratio of that 80% of the total budget must be split into the ratio of 85 is to 15. Now, the reality of the matter is that it is huge because you needed to, to, to ensure that we supply more teachers uh, into the system. And, and I, must, I must say that it's it's something that we are negotiating with, you know, to say, how do we migrate to, to at least to improve or to increase the number of support staff to schools? Uh, so it's a matter of that we must go to bargaining about and finalize. And I think that I've responded to quite a number of questions. It's only the infrastructure one that uh, uh, maybe Tsepo can come in to respond to Honorable uh, 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 Kasim. Mr. Before, Mr. Before. All right, um, Mr. Uh, good afternoon Mr. again, Mr. Chair, and thank you, SG. Should I proceed, Chairperson? Yes. Thank you very much. Yes, I, I just want to pick up on what Honorable Kasim has, um, has, has asked. 
uh, in that um, initially we spoke about 262 projects. And, and indeed, I must say, um, Chairperson, uh, there has been a bit of a delay in that um, respect on these projects that we are working with together with DBE. Uh, what I was just correct is that 16 projects were started in the last financial year, meaning that um, they were started around about January, Dece December, January, thereabout, but they could not be complete completed and they are due to be completed this financial year. Now, this is 16 of the 262. 144 of those projects are the ones which we are saying are on tender. Um, maybe I might just say, um, um, Chairperson, you know, we are saying they are on tender, but um, DBE has told us that they've already issued letters of appointment to the individual contractors. But, you know, because we didn't have that proof, you know, we just had to be safe on that one. So that is um, how far it is. Um, as you can see, 16 plus 144, it gives you that particular figure. But what what um, myself and the team that I work with have thought is that, you know, maybe we have been a bit hands off when it comes to the SAFE program, you know, you know, under the guise that um, it is being run by National. Therefore, we've decided to come closer right now because National has mentioned that they thought they would be able to manage this thing themselves, but they need us to, to be hands on um, because we've got more capacity than um, National has. Uh, due to the PSU that we have contracted, and therefore we have come on board to actually assist. We are having very fruitful meetings with them to try and aggravate these projects. Um, also, what I wanted to touch on is that, Honorable Chair, you are totally correct. Um, under under level four, public works oriented projects um, are, are open for, for starters, for, for them to, to go back to site. And which is why right now we're busy aggravating that all these safe projects, are CD projects and all these projects and any other intervention that we need to make are, does actually go to site. I think what I wanted to mention was that is the supply chains that, that are still a bit slow and um, the supply of material, supply of this, supply of that. But however, as an industry, there's a, there's a huge um, aggravation to say the rest of the industry needs to, to open. Thank you very much. But what is missing, Mr. Pofiole, are the timelines on your side. Well, those are depending on the other, you know, uh, partners for that. And it's missing your plan. We would appreciate if that timeline, those timelines can be given. Uh, okay, Chair Yes. Oh. Yeah. 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 I'll <laughs> <laughs> As if a chair. I can't hear a chair. What's happening now? Now we don't get him, chair. In Chepazin. Chepazin. Chair, Chair Basil, I'm mute. I'm mute, Chair Basil. Uh, yeah, I think it's the chair's network connection that might be a problem. Yeah, it's a problem. It's a serious problem. It's a serious problem, Chair. Network is a problem. Yeah, honorable members, 
I propose that Honorable Mukhaka be the caretaker chair and proceed with the meeting. Chair, I think uh, caretaker and nothing yeah. beyond. Uh, I agree. <laughs> yeah, can it, the caretaker chair was the chair still trying to connect so that we can proceed, Honorable Members. Oh, okay. Continue, Honorable Chair. Seemingly, both chairs are lost. Why doesn't Honorable Land then take over if he's audible to the audience? I propose this full time. <laughs> Honourable members, are we able to get Honourable Mukhaka online? Honourable Yes, let's proceed to the meeting. Honor yeah, Honourable Mukhaka Honor can be the caretaker chair. I will. Honourable Dabeni, at the moment you are more clear than others. There is nothing wrong if you can continue for the time being, please. No, fine, no problem. Uh, SG. Honorable, continue, continue, Chief, continue. Yeah, yeah, no audible. problem. Yeah, I, I okay. see the, the honor, the chair is on the screen. Um, SG. <laughs> SG, are you still there? Mr. Konjan? Yeah. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, acting chair, we are there. Yeah, no, no, no. I think uh, let me act on behalf of the committee for now. Whilst we're still trying to connect the chair. Um, can we... Hello? Yes, yes, chair. We want to wrap yes. up this discussion. Yeah, can, can, can we wrap up this discussion? Let me see when we're going to come in. Yes. Yeah, it's you, Honor. Let me see. You must come in now. To wrap up this discussion. No, th thanks, Chair. Let's appreciate uh, the opportunity to engage the committee under these difficult times. Um, we indeed indebted on the wisdom of the committee members on some of the strategic questions that have been raised in the committee and in general by the populace of the province. We will take a tune from engaging all the stakeholders in education and generally the populace of the province as we traverse uh, the uncharted waters of the COVID-19. But safe to say, Chair, I am making an observation that there seems to be a, so, a sour relationship between the facts emotions and ambitions. And it's going to be important that as we engage extensively on, on how best do we reposition, redirect the efforts of the government and ensure that we save lives and as well save the academic year. It's going to be cr critical for us uh, Chair, to, to deal with that. I would also want to appreciate the contribution, Chair, on some of the key strategic policy discussions that have been raised by honorable members. For example, Chair, we as a Department of Education will forever be indebted in using the statistics and data of the Department of Health so as to inform the scientific decisions that as a sector we are supposed to be taking from time to time, looking to the conditions that are before us as a sector. I am then responding to the question, Chair, that was raised by Honorable Mkhaka, that probably who should decide which schools must be opened and where 
that is informed by the scientific information that comes from the Department of Health. But Equal Health has got no constitutional mandate to decide for education as a sector. So it's a matter that the provincial government via the cabinet must be able to ensure that we have got a synergized collaborative framework on how best do we take decisions on transversal matters like those. I would, le I would leave that discussion at that level. <coughs> but lastly, Chair, as, 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 as the SOD has said, on the issue of the SNP, I think it is the issue of time more than anything else. Because Honorable Kasim would understand that when decisions are taken collectively at a national level, they then bind sectors across all departments, not just education in particular. Hence, I was of the view that when we were engaging at a national level on the SNP proposals, as, as, as proposed by the Western Cape government, it was rejected because it was then opposing the regulations that have been put in place by the National Command Center. Hence, the school nutrition program at that particular level has been, has been was stopped at that particular time. We are also indebted, Chair, on the social mobilization and education on some of the strategic areas of focus. Hence, over this weekend as a sector, we have been invited by the Department of Corporate Governance, Traditional Affairs, to engage the House of Traditional Leaders on Saturday morning. So hence I'm saying the consultation on the matters will forever be there, but how do we then respond on the fear, anxiety, and that might arise out of uh, the experience that we have accumulated in dealing with the COVID-19 is much more needed than ever before. Hence I'm saying it's gonna be critical for us to be able to respond to some of those matters as, as, as proposed. We will take a responsibility, Chair, to look to some of the questions. Uh, for example, Honorable Kasim, that has been writing to us, and uh, we have not responded. But from where I am seated, they told they have responded quite uh, sufficiently on those matters. And I don't think there is any question that has not been answered, unless, unless otherwise. But if there are such questions, then we'll revert back via the house sitting in terms of, of written questions uh, in that regard. Can we therefore take that uh, back to you, Chair, and uh, so that we proceed with the outstanding items? Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable MC. Um, I'm not sure if the Chair is, is back now. Honorable Sazio, are you back? I am Hear me. Honorable Sazewa. We can hear you. Honorable Chair. We still can't hear him. Honorable members, can I adapt to the collective wisdom of the committee on this part? Because where I'm sitting, I'm disempowered myself. I don't have an agenda that I can fly into the screen. Can the Secretariat tell us what is the next item and what should be the approach of the committee to that? Given the fact that we've already passed the time that was allocated for this committee, can we deliberate on that and have a collective wisdom on that? And what was the next issue so that we know exactly what were, what were the issues that are going to be discussed? Can the Secretariat brief us what is the next issue? Our Secretariat of the Legislature, can they brief us? Can anyone in the Secretariat brief the committee what is the next item on the agenda? Uh, Honorable Ndabeni, 
can I assist you? Yes. Yes. Uh, the next uh, uh, item on the agenda is item number six, which is responses to questions on e-learning uh, contract. Now, uh, I know that the department have uh, responded. Wait, wait. Are you? Are you? Is that Honorable Kasim? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. I'm assisting you on this respect. No, fine. Continue. I continue. Yes. Now, I know that the department have responded uh, in this regard, uh, in writing. And, uh, you know, that is why I feel a bit disempowered because the chair who has gone to seek some form of legal advice, uh, I'm not sure if he's able to, to brief the committee because the department have responded to say they are not going to respond uh, on these uh, uh, questions uh, because the issue... Uh, is under a criminal investigation. Now, acting chair, there is no rule of the legislature, uh, nor is there any uh, rule that uh, would allow the department not to respond on this matter. The matter is not sub judicate. For a matter to be sub judicate, which is not what the department has said, by the way, but for a matter to be sub judicate, it would need to be before a court of law. It would need to be under uh, the consideration of a judge and before court of law. This matter is not before court of law, uh, 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 even though there are criminal charges that were laid by myself uh, and uh, 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 is being investigated by the South Police Service. And therefore, uh, you know, I would like for the chair to also comment on the matter because from what he has indicated to me is that his legal advice that he has sought uh, on behalf of the committee is saying the same thing. Okay. Do we have our legal team in the in the in the meeting? Do we have our legal advice of the committee? Mandisa, can you help us? I'm here, Chair. I'm here. Do we have a legal advice of the committee in the meeting? The corner, Chair. The corner, Chair. Yeah, can I'm our legal here. advisor comment on that part? Um, Chair, sure. um, we had advised yesterday, it's advocate badge right here. We had advised yesterday exactly along what um honorable custom just said that thank you chair thank you mec okay, i think as a department we are in very respectfully in a disagreement with the with the advice from from the legal person that spoke earlier on um we we definitely have a different understanding on the sub rule we are of view that this matter has been reported to the Sorry? Who's raising an order? Uh, it's Philatana calling for a point of order, Honorable Chair. Oh, Honorable, can you hold on, uh, Mr. Eddie? Can you, can, you, um, can, you, can you come with a point of order, Honorable uh, Philatana? Thank you very much. I think uh, the person that you asked to take the floor should respect your your role is the views of our advocates who was given an opportunity to speak to play to make a ruling and you have emphasized it that's where we play thank you very much thanks um, the, the order is uh, actually yes yeah i think who 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 with making an inference to whether they agree or disagree with the opinion of the election. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine, Chair, if, if that's the narrative. Can we yeah. can hand it over, Pat? Yeah, it's, can you explain the position of the department and the understanding of the department legally? Chair, thank you very much. The position of the department is that we are unable to respond to any questions regarding this matter. There is a risk of substantial prejudice to the accused persons. The accused person as well as the complainant is present in this forum. There is a risk for the accused person and the Department of Education to further incriminate themselves in the matter, there is a thin balance between the constitutional right and obligation of the of this um, committee 
as opposed to the right of an accused person not to prejudice his case at any stage. Therefore, with respect, Acting Chair, the position and the advice to the Department is not to comment anything on this matter until it has been dealt with by the SAPS and a decision has been made, a judicial decision outstanding has been made by the National Prosecuting Authority. Thank you very much, Acting Chair. Thank you very much, Edith. Uh, MSC, do you want to add, make some additions? No, no we, are comfort, we are comfortable with the with the conclusion made by Ed. Thank you very much, MSC. Honourable members, that is the stance of the department on the matter. Um, can we have uh, members that want to have a reflection on the matter before I, I make a ruling and summarize the matter? Honourable members, do you want to make comments? On the, on the on the on the response by the department. Honourable okay. chair, yes, sir. Honourable chair, I think we are actually reaching a tender point this at this moment. I think the department got that legal position and the legal position given by our side. I think we need to keep this for legal section for further. Uh, you know, environment so that we will get into the matter because at the moment we cannot proceed with this thing because we reached yeah. at a point where both parties are at loggerheads. You know. Thanks, Honorable Honorable Fetan. Thanks, Honorable Yes, I'm there, Honorable Fetan. Yes, I agree with the uh, last speaker that our decision needs to guide us and maybe not give it, uh, you know, a ruling at this point in time. Uh, but uh, I think that our with this kind of response or attitude, uh, they are exposing themselves to a situation where the person who initiated this whole thing, they want to go to court to uh, stop, to stop the whole process that they were about to um, up on if uh, this is the kind of attitude that uh, because this is definitely frustrating the legislature in the course of doing this one and uh, the people with them i'll go to court and say let's stop that whole thing until the department uh, is ready to deal with it in a more transparent way thank you thank you very much uh, honorable uh, honorable cousin uh, thank you very much uh, acting chair uh, actually, Chair, I'm, I'm very concerned about this response of the department because, firstly, uh, you know, legal advice has been given to the committee. The committee uh, chair have made a ruling. Now the department have, uh, have a posture and a stance where uh, they are adamant that because of their own advice, which is completely wrong, I'm actually worried about the lawyers that are advised in the department and I want to know who those lawyers are because they are completely incompetent if this is the advice. But, but are they for a stance? Uh, no, on a, on a, on a yes. Honorable Kassim. Honorable Kassim. Wait, wait. Honorable Kassim. Honorable Yes, it's is 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 guard there, uh, uh, honourable chair. Just, just hold, hold on, MC. I'm still correcting, uh, honourable Kasim. Honourable Kasim. Honourable Kasim. I'm listening to you, chair. You have you have. Injected. I'm saying I'm saying no, no, I'm saying make your point. Sure. Without okay. casting a speech in on the capabilities of the legal department of the legal advice of the department. The same issue I was I was warned against when they were trying to do casting aspiration on our legal team. Oh. Just make a point without casting aspiration on the capabilities of the actual legal team to advise them. Just make a point without doing that. No, no, I, 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 apologize that I apologize for that, Chair. I don't want to derail the meeting. Uh, yeah. Let me make my point. The, the department have now taken a posture and a stance where they are refusing. Uh, th- I just want to summarize this fact very quickly. We have, we have, we have made we have, we have made a decision. You have made a decision. You have made a ruling as a chairperson. We must continue and we must get answers. That is your ruling. 
then the department's response to that ruling is in contempt of that ruling because the, the response is we're not going to answer. That is the whatever the reason for that is. But the response is we're not going to answer. And now as a, as a committee, uh, we have to utilize what are the tools that are at our disposal. By the way, we do have tools that are at our disposal, and I would want uh, advocates to please advise us on that because we can summon, we can issue, issue a summons as a committee. By the way. Uh, like a court of law ourselves, uh, and force the department uh, uh, to answer on these matters. It's not like they have a choice uh, when, when, when they are forced to do so uh, in that respect. That is one thing. The last thing that I want to say, uh, Chair, is the rest of this equity and of our uh, constitutional democracy. The rules are the rules. You cannot change the rules. You cannot argue the rules in different ways. Then you have to make new rules. If the rules are talking about subjudicate, 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 any lawyer worth their salt will, will know. I've even done my own research on the matter, Chair. Is what the, is the definition, what the courts have defined the definition to be, and what that definition is. It is what it is. But this is a test of this committee, Chair, as to whether or not we will allow us as a committee to be undermined outside of the rules uh, of this legislature. And I'm saying we must not allow that. We must utilize the tools at our disposal to affirm and reinforce uh, the rights uh, and responsibility of the community. Yeah. Honorable members, um, I, I can assure you, um, I will tell you that uh, the rules of the legislature will never, will never undermine. However, we, we cannot allow a situation where we drive ourselves into a kind of a cult sack on a matter So, I don't know, can all the participants in the committee mute their, their mics because there's an echo where I'm sitting. The mic of the honorable chair of the committee is not on mute. Uh, I'm sure it's the one that is making echo when I speak. So my, my, my suggestion, other members moving forward, is that we uh, must put the matter in, in, in shelf the matter, put in a bear for now, and go to another issue. What we'll do, we'll consult among ourselves as a committee, as a committee of the, of the, of the, the committee of the legislature, the, the portfolio committee members. And then um, in, in the presence of all members, including the chair, and have a discussion and an approach, a formulated approach on how we must deal with the matter. Because I don't want us to um, propose our individual proposals on this matter, but rather request the chair to convene a special committee meeting of all us to discuss the matter and formulate an approach and agree on approach moving forward on this matter. But for now, let's that. Let's, let's, let's shift the matter for, 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 for the next discussion of ourselves. And um, we've heard what the department has said. We, 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 we have had our legal advisor in terms of guiding us. We do know that in terms of our rules, we've got options that we can use uh, to move forward. However, at this stage, you must then solicit all the views of the members of the committee on this matter and then chart a way forward. Can that be our, our decision, members, and then move on to the next item? Uh, so that we are not stuck in one place because what we cannot do at this meeting is to force the department to respond um, even if we would want to do that. And we will use our available rules and um, instrument within our rules uh, to take the matter for, for And Hence, I'm saying I request the chair to convene a, me a special meeting of ourselves as a committee and discuss the matter with our legal advice and look into what are options that we can use to um, to, to, to take the matter forward. Um, so that's what I propose for now, so that we can have a, a way forward on the matter. Can that be our decision, honorable members? And then we step off the matter and go to the next issue. Chair Chairperson. 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 Who is calling Chairperson? It's, it's Ad. Yes, honorable MSC. No, I just wanted to put on record, Chair that it is not the decision of the committee on education of the legislature to go to court. No, no, no. Honorable MSC. Yes. Honorable MSC. 
Yes, yes, sir. Look, it is, it is not the decision of the committee to go to court. We have not taken that decision. Yes. We have not taken that decision. Where we are now, our legal advice is advising that the matter of judicate does not arise at this point because the matter is not yet before the judge. The fact that has been open to police for criminal investigation, that does not say is the, 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 the matter, the sub care principle arises now. However, we respect the response of the Department of Legal Advice to say, from where they are sitting, in terms of where they are, if they are going to the stage, to be further exposing those individuals charged criminally and the department itself for further um, expose themselves if they were to give uh, certain information at this particular point in time. Hence, the principle of the department says they can't respond to the, to the, to the questions by the, by the committee for now. I am therefore saying, given the two views, that makes the committee to be at the stand still now. I am therefore saying to you, Honorable MC and the, and the committee, I'm proposing, in fact, the ruling that after listening to members, I'm saying we'll have our own as a committee meeting, as a committee outside the department and discuss what is the approach of the committee given what the department has raised and, and maneuver and see how we can move forward on this matter without uh, jeopardizing anybody, uh, trying to find an amicable way of moving forward with this matter. But what I'm running against is that if we to try that now, we'll end up formulating our own individual views on the matter as individual members of the committee, something I, 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 I don't want us to do at this stage. Rather, let's have our own meeting as a committee and, 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 and then uh, with our legal uh, team, then formulate a common approach on the matter moving forward. Um, that's what I'm saying. That's my summary, uh, Honor of MSC. I'm clear that the committee is not in court with the department, has not taken the matter to court. But the committee has, has not um, uh, opened up any criminal case against the department. I'm very clear on those issues. However, on the matter of the oversight, the matter that has been presented by the, our legal team and your legal team had to be separated into when the committee sit alone to discuss the matter. If we're in a physical meeting, our approach would have been that we'll request uh, to excuse the department for a moment and have our own discussion as a committee on this matter. But unfortunately, we're on virtual now. I cannot say discard the department on the virtual and have a discussion. Hence, I'm saying I'll talk to the chair after this so that the chair can then drop in members, have our own special meeting, even if it's, 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 it's Friday, even if it's Monday, or any time that the chairperson will decide. Just a, a meeting on this matter so that we can then formulate an approach as a committee. And Honorable is that chair. summary suffice for the members? Honorable Chair. Chair. Honorable chair, chair, I'm back. Um, chair, Honorable, I'm back. Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair? Honorable I think uh, your proposal is your proposal is in line with the collective uh, wisdom of the committee and the collective responsibility of the committee. It upholds what we believe in. So I think I second what you are saying and let's proceed. Now let's proceed. Uh, Honorable Chair of the committee. Honorable Saziwa. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Oh, thank you so much. No, unfortunately, yeah, I, I was following your discussions. Yeah. Um, honorable, honorable Chair. Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair. Honorable Saziwa. Your line is still very bad. Um, can 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 we be advised? What is the last item? Um, um, this Miss Daniels, what is the next item on the agenda? Hi, chair. Are you able to hear me? What, what is the next item on the agenda? It's a government to take, but it's for members only, chair. Okay. Um, can we try to or get the chair? Can you hear me yeah, honourable chair. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. No, I, I, I've missed your, your conclusion of this aspect. 
uh, on the refusal by the department to respond to questions uh, despite our legal advice that was given. I still hold the view that the department is in contempt of, 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 the, of, of the constitution in its failure to respond to this, these questions. Well, as far as we know, is there's nothing written down. There's no case number. There's nothing. All they need to do is to answer questions as honest as possible. Of course, on the other side, they can be cautious, as you indicated, if they think that their response will be no jeopardizing their chances before a court. They can say so, but for them to refuse to respond to this question, they're in contempt of the Constitution and of our rules of the legislature. Honorable Chair. They, to us that they don't want to respond. Honorable Chair. And then, Honorable, uh, uh, recourse. Honorable Chair. Chair. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The yeah. chairperson has been concluded on that matter. No. Honorable okay. Chair. Yeah. Chair. I'm saying Chair. Chair. Who is calling Chair? Honorable Kaka. Yes. Honorable Kaka, yes. I would wish us to proceed. I'm back now. I'm, 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 I'm spotting here. Hello, Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Honorable. Uh, 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 yeah. so yeah. it correctly. That we must yeah. spend time so that we are able to apply our mind to the party. Yes. It's a matter for the then. Let's proceed yes. uh, um, um, so that we close the meeting. Yeah, honor, honorable chair of the committee, now I'm handing over to you. We, we have you already summarized. Me? Yeah, yeah. Wait, honor, we have already summarized on the matter, informed by the all the elements that you are raising, honorable chair. But we said we, we must find time as members outside the department to, to ventilate to further ventilate on the matter and chart the way forward. Okay. Um yeah, that's what we said. We said we must, right. we must convene an urgent virtual meeting, an urgent virtual meeting of members, including our legal advice, so that we can discuss the matter, take the matter forward. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Honorable Dabin, for holding the fort, and thank you, Honorable Members. I'm sorry that I was cut off. I don't know what has, what has happened. Um, I've already, you know, taken a decision, and, and I'm in the process of actioning it, that... Our proposed date for the next meeting is the 28th of this month, which will be next week's Thursday. For basically four areas that we have to iron out. One, in that meeting that we're proposing, we're preparing a memo that we want to have a joint meeting between ourselves uh, and, the, and, the, and the committee on works. But we want us to iron out this issue of infrastructure uh, that has to be attended to between the Department of Education and Department of, of Public Works and Infrastructure. So in that meeting, again, you must have a in the Department of uh, Transport to iron out the issue of the scholar transport, because there are many questions that we, we, we asked. But uh, in the absence of the Department of Transport that is uh, in charge of this, we it's difficult, therefore, for us to have a clearer picture about what's going to happen on the 1st of June. Thirdly, on the same meeting, we want to rope in the national treasury on the very matter of the e-learning contract, because it's said to be a transversal kind of a, of a, of a contract. So that after I've been advised uh, by our legal teams, the Department of Transport, because it's the one that has to okay a transversal kind of a contract. So in that meeting that we're proposing, we want those matters to be attended to. Lastly, on the same question that by next week, the one must have given us an updated uh, state of fitness report on all the areas that we have asked questions. So therefore, that forms part of the way forward for this one. Concerning the deployment to districts, we have prepared a draft that members have to, have to, have to comment on it because we had said we have to go and visit uh, schools. Of course, not all of them. Uh, as a committee, just as a sample of checking the state of readiness and what is the picture in the schools.
when these learners will be back, you know, those schools are there, PBEs, all the necessary information is there, physical distancing that has been observed in everything. So I want to comment on those, on, those, on, on that draft. What I've done was to, because currently the legislature has not allowed us to go and uh, sleep over somewhere. I've, the principle that I've built was to allow members to roam around where they are located, where they are found at this stage. Hence, therefore, we are going to see those those those, uh, those proposals. Therefore, by tomorrow, I'll be clear if you can make your comment. I'll be talking to the chief whip as well as the chair of chairs so that we can be able to give an note. If it allows, they allow us, therefore, to be to move around the province, not to be confined in our areas of residences, then that information will be available to us next week in our meeting that we're proposing. Having said that, remember, let me thank everybody that has participated, our social partners, the observers from equal education, uh, the Office of the Auditor General, uh, our unions, uh, the public monitor service from, 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 from as well as the Department of Defense led by the, the, the MSC and uh, the SG of the site of administration and our support staff. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much, members. Bye bye. Goodbye. Bye bye. Thanks, Honorable Chair. Bye bye. You missed out on a heated debate. You missed out on a very heated debate. Yeah, you must pay me for this day. <laughs> Now I am running away from this debate. I am going to I am to debate. No. young man. is Thank <laughs> you.